Hi everyone, you're listening to Scaling DevTools, the show that investigates how DevTools go from zero to one. I'm joined today by a friend of mine, Phil, who is the founder of Tiny Host. Phil, it's great for you to be here today. Thanks, Jack. It's great to be on your podcast, finally. Tiny Host is now at 5K MRR. How has growth been like at Tiny Host? Yeah, complete roller coaster, to be honest. I, th I think with most SaaS tools, you go through different trajectories. You go through, you know, the, the valley of doom and death where you wonder if it's ever going to get anywhere in your early kind of struggles. But as it starts to pick up and you start to really figure out things a bit more, it starts to snowball. Really early in the day, we launched Tiny with basically within like, you know, three to four weeks of development time and had very little features on there. And that was just to get something out, which I think a lot of people struggle with. And then we just spend the rest of the time just marketing it. It wasn't until the product on launch, which was about four or five months after where we really got our first paying customers. But before that, we didn't have any way to log in. We didn't have a payment system. So you couldn't do anything except use it for free. But that was a really good period to really learn, you know, what people were using us for and why. And I think that's really key for your launch is just, you have a thought process and you have a pathway where you think the product should go, but it's really important to remain open to see how your users actually will dictate the product. What we did, we launched tiny host, um, and one of, you know, the really good strategies I've learned over the past when launching products is launch it but with really close feedback from users early on. And what you'll find is that a lot of users will, you know, give you feedback, which correlate to each other. So they'll say the same things, but in different ways. And you realize that a lot of people want something for us. It was custom domains. It was like maybe a place to log in. So that's what you should build next straight after your launch, but to monetize that, put it behind a paywall. And that allows you to actually start building revenue through it. Um, and you'll see that people will use your product for free, but then they'll also have similar needs as, as your other users and they'll pay to upgrade. We had a few features and we had a payment plan and when we launched product on, on, on product on, and then it's literally about basically, I call it just, you know, sprinkling your marketing seeds across the internet and seeing which ones will grow. Because it's about figuring out what are your real growth channels. So with Tiny Host, we realized it was SEO, but that took us a long time to find out. And I think with a lot of tools, SEO is useful. There's a lot of things like the jobs to do framework, but it doesn't necessarily mean it could be SEO. It could be, you know, it could be podcasting, it could be YouTube. It could be a lot of different things. So figuring that out is really important next for growth. And there's no easy way to do that, honestly. Like you literally just have to target all the different channels. So we were on Reddit, we were on YouTube. Slack communities, or uh, we were creating landing pages for SEO, Twitter. And then what you'll see is some of these seeds will start to grow and get more visitors to your project faster than others. And at that point, you double down on what is actually working and you ignore the rest because you can't spread your resources that wide. Yeah, continuously doing that is really important. And then you will see some growth in, in that direction once you put that effort in which is marketing. So essentially, if you, if you split your time up into, you know, hundreds, you're probably spending 15, 20% already creating a product, but the other 80 initially has to be marketing because in this world, unfortunately, there's so many products which are being released that you have to shout to be heard through marketing. And yeah, you may have the best product in the world, but if nobody knows it exists, unfortunately you're going to fail. So marketing is even more important really early stages than the product itself, because you can easily shift and change your product based on, you know, what your users say, but just building, adding features to a product without having any users is a recipe for disaster. Phil, my next question is tiny host is a simple hosting provider. Hosting has been done, right? Why does the world need a new hosting provider? That's a very good question and an existential question for tiny host, but I think we can, if we step, you know, one level up, I think a lot of founders and aspiring entrepreneurs think that when you 
launch new product or you're trying to ideate for something, it needs to be groundbreaking, new, something that no one's ever seen before. It can be that, but it's very, very difficult because number one, the market is not validated because you don't really know if people want that and you need to educate and train people in that way to really, to really get great growth. But if you take an existing product that's already out there. And we all have products we use and we all have favorites and things we don't like. And just think about how you can improve it or at least modernize it for the current state of the web. The web has changed a lot since the 90s and when it was first released. And it's con constantly evolving and it will evolve again in 15, 20 years as we grow. And it will always need a newer version of what the web already had previously. So if we go back to hosting, Hosting, I think, is stuck in the 90s and is still ex exclusively reserved for technical people. So you have a lot of, you know, cPanel hosting still out there. You have, you know, things like FTP still set up and WordPress, which is, you know, not being used for what it should be used. It, originally, it was originally a blogging platform. Now it's like a website builder for some reason. There's always room to disrupt and it's an easier platform to take something that already exists because the market is validated. People know what it really is and further improve it than trying to create something brand new. So with tiny host, we, we did a similar thing, but we also stumbled upon the fact that we we're covering a niche in the marketing and the web hosting space. And that's basically hosting for non-technical users. So again, as the creator economy is growing, more people want to put content on the internet because that's the way to distribute their content. So, but they, they don't know what cPanel, FTP, and they, they get really frustrated with WordPress. They just want to put it on very quickly and nobody is catering for anything like that. You have big platforms such as AWS, Netlify, Vercel, which developers are very familiar with, but they're very much tailored towards developers, startups, and technical founders, heavy configuration. But if I just wanted to put a PDF online or have a small microsite and want to get it live in a few seconds. There actually isn't, you know, a really simple tool out there. And we've evolved across that to different file types, you know, PDFs. And it's, it's amazing what we've discovered is how many different verticals want, um, to put things online. So we cover quite a broad customer base. So it's everybody from designers to developers, to marketing and real estate, hospitality for the PDFs for menus, the e-learning industry, cryptos for you know, NFT landing pages or white papers, digital artists, you know, creating 3D visualizations. Also just students learning to code. People who don't know about GitHub and again, are very low technical. They really want to see, you know, their work online and want to share it with people. They find tiny hosts super useful. And that's one of our first demographics. So it's, it's. I think that's why tiny hosts exists. It's really about things like saving people time and money as well. So yes, you can do what tiny host does yourself. If you're a developer, you can spend a few hours or even less following tutorial. But I think if you're smart enough, it's why people smart developers, I think can buy a template and will buy a template rather than build it themselves because is 15 bucks versus spending three hours, basically. How much do you value your time at? So again, if you're building something, if you can save people time or money or make people more money, people will pay for your product. And it's just about building a profitable business on, on the back of that. I can say that I've received this lesson from you at the pub previously, and it's <laughs> one that I agree wholeheartedly with. We should first be thinking about improving what is already out there rather than trying to come up with these new ideas, even though I still fall within the trap of trying to come up with new ideas. Yeah. And I, I think it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't really shake up and, and, and innovate into a big standard, but when you're starting out as bootstrap or like you need resources, right? If you don't have funding and it's like, for example, Amazon really just put books on the internet. That's really what they were doing. They were online bookshop, but now they are huge. They, they literally offer cloud services and completely shaking up the e-commerce kind of space. You can unlock those opportunities, but only if you have the resources and you have to build your resource on the platform to get there first. And the easiest way to do that is literally to build something that already exists, but better and maybe position it to a different market. 
it's not actually that difficult, but it is not as attractive as like thinking about, I don't know, how do we create something groundbreaking that never exists, like a VR, I don't know, NFT or something <laughs> like that. It's, yes, it looks attractive, but you have to be realistic at the end of the day. But you could create e-commerce platform and then create a VR NFT off that. And you already have an audience and resources and tailor it in the right way. So yeah, I think that's really important to consider. And you mentioned maybe positioning it to a different audience and you touched on this previously, but it seems like when you first set out, it was like probably going to be for developers, but more and more now non-technical users are using Tiny. Could you share a little bit about what that was like? In the first few months, again, I thought this was definitely a developer tool. I'm a developer. So you basically tried to you know, market it to your own demographic, but we quickly realized that when we did market it in such a way, people compared us with existing tools, which developers are already familiar with and know how to configure. So they don't really see the value from tiny host because it's a tool, which doesn't need a lot of configuration. And so rather than go out and build another product, uh, what we saw, and if, because of the close analysis we did on the product and, and basically seeing who uses us and why and the content we uploaded. So every single site that was uploaded in the early days and still today, you know, I clicked on and I viewed, I, I tried to figure out you know, what they were doing, why they were doing it. And we saw that there were also like a lot of non-technical users using this and they never questioned the value of tiny host. So it, it became more obvious that we should go in that direction because clearly they appreciate it more than another market. And I, I think that's a really important lesson to, to learn is when you build something before you, you know, just throw it away and consider it redundant, try and see if you can repackage it up and reposition it for a different market, because it's very easy to just think of a new idea, but often, you know, developer, the developer market is all, is actually very well catered for and also somewhat saturated at times because, you know, developers are building tools for other developers, but there are so many other industries out there that just people don't build tools for mainly because they don't know anything about them don't have the background for but you build something that is not that great but it serves somewhat of a purpose they'll love you for it because it's no one's building anything for them like you know if you build something for construction or the publishing world or like e-learners or something like that so really think about if you can reposition your product to something else and you get that data through just talking to your users seeing the content that people are uploading and being very, very observant from your product. And that is only possible if you launch very early with zero plan other than spreading the word of your product, because that means you'll get a lot of people from all different realms literally on your product to, to use it. And then you'll see who's actually, you know, who actually values it, who thinks it's, you know, not that great. And, and then follow that direction. Your users really will dictate the product for you. It's a mixture of your users dictating the product and you having the strategy and your know, intuition to lead the map as well, because they're not going to know everything they want, but they will point you in a direction um, and then just have the conviction to go in that direction and, and say, okay, I think this is also what they want. Go and build it. See if people want that as well and further develop it. And, and that's what, yeah, we've done with Tiny since. Phil, thank you so much for your time. Tiny host is a very cool tool and i know that you mentioned a lot of product growth teams are using tiny host now for instance you said someone's built a sql version of wordle sql Erdle, and launched it yeah we had a database company recently that someone from a product growth team used to be a software engineer then became a product manager so he has slight technical background and yeah, just one, he, you know, built this app with Svelte, basically the JavaScript framework, but couldn't figure out, you know, how to build it and host it really quickly. And he's found our video online, I basically uploaded it in a few seconds and we had a yeah call with him recently. And he was like, no, this is actually perfect for product growth teams because they want to, you know, spin up marketing sites, micro sites very quickly and to share it with people. And we have built in analytics as well. So we can basically, you know, analyze the traffic that you get from certain like projects. So it's, it's been a really you know, good tool for that, which you recently learned and we're constantly you know, learning of new use cases. So if you're interested in tiny host, go to T I I N Y dot host, check it out. Thanks for listening and we'll see you very soon. 